Hello, welcome to YouTube My Television, your home action figure news. Today, in this video, we're going to have a look at all the reveals from May the 4th be with you, and some extra products as well, like this one, made by the people at ZBrush. There's a channel called Pixelogic ZBrush. On May the 4th, they live streamed an event called the Star Wars May the 4th ZBrush event. A five hour long show, five hours. It took me a long time to catch up. I'd watch the show, and then in this video, we're going to take out the highlights, the best bits. You can also watch the entire live stream because I'll link it down in the description to watch the whole event if you wish to. This video will showcase the reveals without the banter and all that other stuff, but there's some insights into this video that are quite interesting. Obviously, it's Black Series and TVC. Finally, we get to see the box for Boba Fett's throne room or Jabba's Palace. The box, we haven't seen the box and we finally get to see it in this video. Uh, you'll see the comparison between old R2 and the new R2. They'll look at Din Djarin, Paz Vizsla, Doc Onda, Boba Fett's throne room, as I mentioned, Chris Stanton, Cad Bane, R2-D2, as I mentioned, the N1 Starfighter in full detail, Endor Bunker behind me, Clone Trooper, the speeder bike comparison between the old and the new, uh, Ahsoka's Black Series, Grand Inquisitor, and they wrapped it up with Darth Malgus. It might be a long video. I'll see how it goes when I edit it all together. Sit back, relax, get yourself a cup of coffee, and enjoy the show. <laughs> well, let's get started with the stuff that you guys uh, want to show off here. For sure. I'm sure everyone's uh, itching to see what you have to share with us on the Hasbro line. So, um, where do you want to start here? Sure. Um, we're gonna start. Bailey's gonna put up. We're gonna start with the new Mando. I mean, he's the yeah. the the new guy in Ooh. the uh, Ooh. you know in the universe in the galaxy, I should say. So this is our brand new Mando. We um, we did one previously, and he, you know, when we did that one years ago, I think this was back in 18, because the series came out in 19, so we do it a year before, we went off of concept art. There was nothing, we didn't have the final images. We were going off of uh, concept images. And so, you know, it, it didn't quite live up to the standards that we have now. So, and as well as the different innovations that we've come up with, whether it's, you know, the, the new shoulder pads or the butterfly joints or all of that stuff, the, the things that we put in there, um, uh, just I really, you know, I think help the figures to really come along. The other cool thing with him is the, um, what do you call it? He's got the vibro blade here on his, on his leg. It's kind of, I don't know if you can see this, but, yeah, we can switch to your camera. There you go. Yep. We're showing your camera now. Okay. So, yeah, it sheathes right into his boot. He's got his backpack, his blasters, um, the soft goods cape. So, yeah, he was a lot of fun to to work with. You know, again, now that we have a few years of, of uh, entertainment with him, uh, you know, we really wanted to do him some justice. So, and Bailey's got the the if we can switch to that the digital yep. model that we did look at that beautiful yeah uh, that's awesome so this is 100 percent zbrush all the armor yeah. and everything yep yeah it's all zbrush um yeah I, mean, I know we talked about this before but yeah this this i don't i find there's nothing that we can't do at least i haven't hit anything yet that we can't do in zbrush I mean, as far as Black Series, it's it's been a you know a constant evolution, where you know we started out you know back then it, it was you had the double uh, knees, double elbows and stuff, and you know we've transitioned into single elbows, and now we've added butterflies, um, where I think that really helps to kind of get like two handed blasts. Actually, there's another figure later we'll look at. Um, oh, Tom, can and, you explain just in case, uh, just for folks? Um, what the butterfly joints actually are, because all of us have our own nicknames for them. Thank you. Sure. The butterfly is like it's it's essentially to allow your arms to come to get like your you know your arms to come forward or back. So it acts like you know the clavicle, scapula in the back, and um and so it allows your 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 figures to bring their their hands forward together as close as possible. Yeah. Sometimes they can't quite get. All right. Are we gonna jump to me? Yeah. No. So we're gonna next talk time. about Paz Vizsla. Yes, he is. Should I grab? Yeah, grab. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Do some grabbing. We have the actual figure here. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, just using this, I work more so on the Florence line, and so it's all about world building with these guys. So, Paz uh, Vizsla is one of our main newer deluxe figures, and this guy is—he's one of my favorite 
Um, we did some new different things. Uh, we really wanted to push our factory, our partners in Hong Kong, to where there, if you notice, there's very little actual parts on this guy. These are actual color grades. So every piece is actually a colored piece of plastic. So except for maybe the little details here on where the armor is like dinged up and show some weathering and some damage, this figure is going to stand the test of time because you're not going to get a lot of paint and wear and tear from figures from like the early 80s and stuff where the paint's starting to rub off and stuff like that. No, not with this guy. Every little piece, all of this, they're all little intersecting, interlocking pieces of actual cast plastic in that color. So we really pushed and wanted to do something really different with this guy just to see how far we could take it. We've got a knife in our sheath too. At oh. Nice. Woo! <laughs> Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Smaller scale, we're bringing ships. <laughs> but yeah, we, we got this. So yeah, this even comes off of his backpack. Carter, I don't know if they can I mean, see at home the, the true quality and the detail of these uh, four-inch line figures, you know, three 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 point seven five figures. It is actually like monumental sculpture work that's being done at this scale. Thanks. I just want to say that the level of detail, again, the LOD is so, so spot on, man. Yeah, our team is like amazing that um, brings these all, all to life. Uh, just it's so much fun working with the design team internally, working with LFL, working with our Hong Kong partners and just the brush program. I mean, all of this, this is literally secret, but we take the six inch figure and we'll scale this it. This is down. a secret, not anymore. <laughs> I mean, not anymore. Right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but just so no, call it our secret again. that's the kind of shrinkage you're ever gonna see <laughs> just so we have a little bit more cohesion so we don't have like go well, wait a minute what's going on with the six inch figure but if you notice uh, if you end up getting the six inch figure and also this figure this one's a little bit newer so he's a little bit closer to um the actual like on screen appearance of this character so where there's a little bit more concept work working with the earlier six inch figure so you actually get two different figures, even though it's like the same character. So when you get both, I encourage you to get both. This one's my favorite, but um, I just encourage you to get both and just see what the little differences and the similarities are between the two. So can we pull up the digital scope? There you go. Oh yeah, let's go, let's go into the digital world, the digital realm. So yeah, a lot of the articulation points with these guys, we're not able to also do the um, butterfly joints just because of our scale. We're trying to get, do a lot with very little room, very little space. So we're just seeing, Okay, what can we achieve with these guys um, that will keep it kind of similar to the articulation style for the six inch figures? And what can we bring new to the table for our four inch figures? So um, there's a lot of pieces, a lot of parts with this guy, especially like I mentioned, um, we want to do more color breaks than actual painted parts. So there's there's a lot of pieces going on with this guy. So I mean, this is, um, this is Taz Vizsla. Next. Next. Next up is Black yeah. Series. Doc Ondor. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, I haven't seen this one. More nice. into the line was always a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, this one was a lot of fun. And, and the reason I want to showcase is I, I just love the fact that we got to do a different form factor alien thing. Because a lot of the stuff we do is humanoid, you know, just like uh, guys in helmets and stuff like that, which is still cool. But the fact that we got to do him, uh, do this guy, you know, Harkens back to my childhood as well, you know. I mean, I, I saw uh, A New Hope back in gee, 77, first movie in theaters, and just seeing that cantina scene uh, was so much fun, such a blast seeing those aliens in there. And obviously, that's not him specifically, but his his brethren, one of his brothers were in there. And then, yeah, uh, there you go. So, wait, so I, I, I wanted to ask this question. Actually, I forgot to ask this. Is okay. that your favorite Star Wars movie then, New Hope? Uh, probably not. Empire. It's up there, but Empire is probably Empire. my new one. So the actual hard copy, though, the actual figure is that has the soft goods. Yes. And then you have it. So is this just kind of like a placeholder that you have for the soft goods in the digital model? No, actually, there's he's uh this is Doc Ondor from um, the Disney parks, and then oh. he has multiple layers on that character and that little animatronic guy, and so. So we do have we have his vest uh, sculpted with that sash that goes across, and then he's got a layer. Is it? That's another thing I like about this guy. He's got a lot of layers to him, and um, so he's got that really elaborate necklace in there as well. And um, and then there's a soft goods that goes underneath it. So 
Cool. So and for the, un for the uninitiated, the soft goods are the, what look like the garment pieces are produced in different types of uh, plastics. Well, no, the soft goods actually, if we go back to, is the clothing, it's literally right. clothing. Mm -hmm. So if you go back to the, go, go the thing. Do, do, do. There you go, you're back, yep. So this is all fabric. So this is what we in the industry call soft goods. And then this stuff is that PVC vest that you saw in the digital file. So this is also flexible. It's yep. just not as flexible as, as you know, uh, cloth. Actual and then, cloth. so, you know, we try to, we, we have our um, in-house uh, pattern makers and stuff, and they go in there and, you know, they get our sculpt file. Actually, they do it in, in, in 3D as well. They, they get our sculpt files that we do in ZBrush, and then they take their software and, and develop uh, different patterns to, to fit to the figure. And then, you know, you're, we're accounting for all of these things as well. Like in there, you got to have a space. It's like one point, whatever, two millimeters in between the body and, and the um, the vest. So it's a lot of little variables that you have to account for as you're doing this. I think the point is, you guys are making it literally as they're making the movie the show yes. at the same time. Yeah, they they can yeah. make the show when right. the show comes out. Right. Yeah. That's yeah, they tiny. can actually make the shows faster than we can <laughs> make the toy because the, the tooling process is mm -hmm. pretty extensive. So a lot of times we don't have the time to wait. You know, we'll get scans after the fact, but it's too late in order to kind of hit that on shelf date that we're targeting. And, you know, the schedule is always the determining factor for these things, unfortunately. But yeah. but yeah, when we do get them, absolutely, we use them. For, for this guy, we didn't get anything. Um, but... You know, again, if 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 it's available, I'll take it because that's certainly always helpful. And they yeah. their hats off the toy makers, designers. You guys are yeah. trying to make the character that's going to be in the film at the end that we're all going to know, and you got to have that line up. It's not an easy task to do. And that brings that brings up actually an interesting question too, which was also asked in the chat, which is how much back and forth do you do you spend with the IP versus the actual the product that you're producing? Because you're since you're trying to get it out around yeah. the same time, if not faster. Is there a lot of back and forth? Is there a lot of uh, art direction that happens? Well, hopefully not. I mean, you know, we're we're definitely striving to before before we get you know in front of Lucasfilm because obviously they they review everything and they approve everything and and they're um, uh, they're the gatekeepers essentially. You know, my our job essentially is to get it as close as possible and anticipate any any uh critique that they might have and then you know you know if all goes well they might have a few comments you know i kind of look at it like i'm trying to make their job as easy and as hard as possible easy in that they look at it and go yep i get it that's so and so that's doc Honda or whatever hard in the sense that they're looking to see they they have to really critique it and go in there and go hmm what's wrong what's missing you know and then so that's that's kind of how i look at it what do you got next, what we got next? Yeah, let's go let's move on all yeah. right. And so far, the chat is just loving it. There's a lot of yes. just praise on the oh. texture and the size and detail. What? Do I need to make room for this? We this. Oh. <laughs> I was yes. playing with this. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Field testing. Field this testing. I was field <laughs> testing. <laughs> Kyle's going to bring in the uh, steady cam. <laughs> steady I want to pick it up, but oh, I no, feel like <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm an earthquake. It's going to happen. <laughs> There we this go. thing's wow. super impressive. Oh. There you go. First impression out the gate, by the way, as a as a as a now professional field tester, okay. uh, amazing. I was having the time <laughs> of my life. I did not want to go. <laughs> yeah, this this thing uh, was definitely a labor of love. I always wanted this when I was a kid, just to put all of my Jabba's denizens all in there and have Jabba hanging out and having them just reenact the Return of the Jedi scenes. Uh, or just create my whatever kind of where my imagination would take me. Um, now with technology and with ZBrush, we can get things to where we even have like the oh, engineer. Yeah. We've got this. God. You can actually just kind of spin the little uh, barbecue there over the flames. We've got all of these little details back here. The little details back here on on the table. Just all of these. This is literally like its own small world encapsulated in this little playset. Um, yeah, yeah. This, and even just to me, like, really where it really comes to life is all of the secondary, like, reads, all of the detail and the texture. There's even 
sand texture on the flooring. There's extra bit detail right here on the front of the stairs. There's all of these tiny little pieces here. So, I mean, you're going to get a complete bang for your buck with uh, this place. Like, this is, this is truly something uh, both myself and the design team, Lucas Film, all of us love this guy. And how can you not love Big Bib Fortuna? His code name was Fat Tony. Big Bib. Big, big Bib. Fat, Fat Tony. Big Bib. Fat, Fat Tony. Fat Tony. Then it became Big Boy Bib. And so I was just changing all of the place. <laughs> you got that East Coast vibe. Yeah. Rigo. <laughs> that would be. I'm going to call you up. Rigo. <laughs> Fat T out of the West Coast. That would be awesome to have a Tom Rigo figure sit on the stone. Wow. You know, yeah. There it is in Zebrush. Yes. There wow. it is. <laughs> and there were a lot. Um, a lot of pieces, uh, a lot that went on with this, not only with the figure, the figure itself has a ton of pieces within it, but then the playset itself has all of these pieces. So there were a lot of components and we took meticulous care with all of these, like trying to just really replicate everything that we would see on the screen. And at the time, it, we were going on some very lit, some more lit, some not as lit, um, images so some of the things hey we had to go back and work really closely with Lucasfilm to really make sure everything was perfect with this guy um even with uh bib i did not know this until the designer brought it up there are actually two small little tendrils that he has coming off of his neck and you can barely see them i didn't even know it was there until she pointed it out so she's got like a great eye for this she's a huge star wars fan as well so i'm it, again, super minor detail, but um, we want to capture every. Oh, yeah, they're there. Yeah, look at every that guy. Oh, detail Fat Tony, this guy. So yeah, FT. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> in the house. And also back to what we were talking about the soft goods. So we actually have some. Go ahead, just take it apart, and we'll put it back together. It's okay. Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's got to go back exactly the way it's put it together. It's on camera. Okay, <laughs> so we have completely. We actually have these little pelts. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah. Yeah. So these are actually like little pelts of to, to creatures that have endured get. the suffrage of Jabba's yeah. wrath. And so now they're like just kind of hanging out here with uh, Big Tony, Big Big Bib. You think they <laughs> could have an Ewoks? It looks almost like a like a unwrapped Ewok. You know what? I could see. I like hold it up that. to the people at home. I mean, it kind of yeah. looks like an unwrapped Ewok. <laughs> <laughs> My people have suffered enough, Fat Tony. Look at me now. Yeah. Get up in them trees. But even with this, we have our <laughs> actual pattern, our internal pattern team that will actually make this pattern, these kind of patterns um, for things like this and also for Bib himself. So instead of making this completely plastic, we wanted him to be able to sit and still have these road. No bib for tuna back in nineteen had a soft um soft goods robe as well. So we still that yeah, that OG felt. Yeah. So yeah, just bring and he was actually my uh return of the Jedi figure that I got as a kid because ever ever, ever figure. Wow. Well Luke was sold out. Of course I wanted Luke in Jedi outfit, but he was sold out in every town. I had to finally back order him from a mom and pop shop. But until then, my dad was like, well, what about this guy? Because he had the big, the big neck pieces and everything, yeah. the tendrils coming off of him. And I didn't care. Like, oh, I love him. He had the, the cool looking eyes and the brow and like the, the hand. I just loved everything. And he was, he was. Uh, and those sharp nails on a finger. Yeah. I remember it was a very strange figure to look at as a kid. You know, you're like, oh, God, that's yeah. cre he's a creepy dude. Yeah. I mean, everybody else was like, oh, Boba Fett, Boba Fett. Like, no, dude. It's Bib Fortuna. Yeah. Next Let's up. go to the next one. Here we go. Next up is Black Series, Chris Anton. Oh, look at that. Oh, there he wow. is. <laughs> All right. So this guy, yeah, he was he's a big boy. He's beefy. He's you know, we did uh an earlier version. We hadn't seen him yet in Book of Boba Fett, and we you know utilized our old chewy mold and just kind of added a few things based on the, the comic version, but then Little did we know he was going to make his on-screen appearance in Book of Boba Fett. And when he did, as soon as we saw that, we're like, ah, we got to do this guy. And and he looked just fantastic. And, um, you know, for he's just a really intimidating-looking guy. Um, 
comes with that giant blaster. Uh, he's, you know, I don't know, there's not much to say. I just, I just love looking at him. He's, he's got such, <laughs> he's got such a presence on him. And um, but you know, we're able to incorporate all of the, the usual articulation. He's got the butterflies. He's got, you know, the. It's tough with his head as far as the the multi point um, articulation in the neck, but you know, we'll throw it in there just to kind of get as much out of it as we can. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. You want to switch to the yeah, sure. Oh, there we go. Really cool, man. Wow. Look at the volume on that thing. Yeah. You feel the girth. Yes. So this is this is a six inch. I'm sorry. This is six I was inch. Nope. out. <laughs> yes. Yep, yes. mounts to his back. We uh yeah, he's you know the the fur and trying to incorporate that and, and the articulation sometimes is you know can be a challenge because it the fur gets in the way as far as range of motion. Yep. But but he, he can get in some good poses. Yeah. So and again, speaking volumes to that articulation where you see that last frame where we saw the, the actual production figure holding the gun coming fully across the chest and the, the torso region in this kind of motion. Yeah. I just really dig it, man. You guys are hitting the home runs. Are one, figure one, after the one a lot like that too. So I mean, it's a uh, and normally for like a really big bulky figure like this, you know, that range of motion it was previously not really a thing. But butterflies offer us like so much like versatility, even for like a, a bigger frame character to really hold like those like really cool blaster poses like Tom just had on his screen. So and like yeah, the, the parts breakout for like, for this guy is you know pretty much like the same complexity with like any Black Series figure where. You can mount like this, like a little blaster, and like this little uh, key on the back of his belt, or back of his like sash, rather, whatever you want to call that thing. Um, so yeah, he's just got really cool functionality for being such a big figure, and we're really happy with how he came out too. So yeah, the other nice thing about a lot of these designs, again, I don't have any input as far as the designs, but when I see stuff like this, like the the bandolier shoulder pad section, if you can pull that off, Bailey. You know what's nice about that that hides a lot of the the ugly you know so if you can flip that so then you can see once it flips you'll see where the butterfly you know is cut away you can see the different color there and and but you don't see that when the the, the ear is on so it hides it well but you get all of that that range without you know without breaking the illusion of this being just like a mini you know mini character all right next up is Vintage Cad Bane. Oh, yes. He's up there. There's your boy. Got a little Cad Bane. So let's see. So this is the first appearance of this guy in uh, our vintage line. So this guy's got a lot going on. He's got a removable hat. He even has his little respirator with the uh, hoses, breathing apparatus that goes into his back, <laughs> through his coat and into his upper torso. So he's got a lot going on there. We also are doing, making these guys at this scale, when you're getting into holsters, we have to have a specific wall thickness. And again, to Tom's point at the beginning of all of this, uh, we try to accommodate for the 4% shrinkage in the plastic. So with that, the holsters, we have to make sure that we have a wall thickness for those as well. And we want to try and get it as thin as possible uh, still to meet our production requirements, but also to um, make sure that it still looks amazing on the figurine, doesn't have something completely bulky on the side. So that thickness actually is at 4%. It is 0.832 millimeters. Whoa. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Not more or less. So get it, get, get it, get it right in there. Get, get right, right up on it. You know, get, get, the, get the hairs in the guy's nose. Look at it in there. <laughs> your guys' uh, toys. And what's great uh, about also working in ZBrush as opposed to when we're working traditionally in wax or some kind of other like um, like clay or type medium, you can get patterns. You can get smaller, super small details that normally you wouldn't be able to really get in wax or something like that, or just these nice repeating um, patterns on say um, leather. Because we always want to make sure. I always want to tell my vendors or people I'm working with, there's no. I don't want to have something be completely smooth when a figure comes in. I want to have some kind of texture, even though it might not appear in the final production in the final piece. I still want to have some kind of texture on there because I want to make sure that these look as close to real world as possible. So there's going to be texture on this jacket. There's going to be texture on this boots, on this pants. And again, whether or not that shows up in um, 
in actual production, and a lot of it actually does. So um, technology has really advanced since a lot, since uh, we've even been doing this even the last eight, 10 years. I echo what Carter was saying as far as the textures. Oh, that, that was the biggest thing for me, I think, because you know, you're limited with your, you know, the medium that you're working with. And then when you're sitting there sculpting this tiny little head that's the size of your fingernail, or smaller even, it's, you know, and trying to sculpt eyelids and, you know, and throwing textures into the face and stuff. Ah, that's, that was nearly yeah. impossible. So, or e even especially weapons. Um, one of the main things that I wanted to get into Dimple, was hard surface, hard edges. And you just couldn't achieve that in wax. And especially to not only achieve something hard edge, but also to make sure that it was perfectly symmetrical. <laughs> what do we got up next? Yeah, let's go next. Well, let's keep on coming next. next. Hasbro to the Black Series figure. We got our new R2 D2. Oh, oh there he is. Oh. Uh, yeah. There's our old faithful friend. I just pre ordered him myself. You did? Yeah. yeah. Had to. He, yeah, I'm so not sure. Had to, like, you had to like, post up over there, Tom, too. With What's that? The physical. Yeah. yeah. So you've got like, all the like, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So the thing with this one, you know, back in. R2-D2, the first one that we did was released, uh, and, you know, it had some shortcomings, and no pun intended, <laughs> and um, <laughs> we had a lot of, uh, you know, when when this one came up to, to do it again, I was super excited, because I really wanted to do this character justice, because I love R2-D2, and, and one of the things I was thinking about was, you know, he comes with, he's like a Swiss Army droid, right? So he comes with all these little accessories, and they all plug into, you know, Bailey will show you digitally, but like, you know, they plug into the doors here. They have the, the sense, ah, whatever. They have the sensors they plug into here. But <laughs> what we wanted to do was we wanted a place to store them. So I was thinking, what if we were able to extend the neck and telescope it so that you could put all of the wow. like, accessories oh, wow. in there? So wow. I know that. Little, little accessories go in there. Oh, you know, the cool. idea I had was just, you know, they're coming from inside his body anyway. So <laughs> imagining that they just kind of rotated out from there. And that's kind of what this is. So, yeah, this still pivots over here. You know, you got the third leg that can pop out. Sorry. Leaning over to try. I like what's happening because it's like unveiling. They don't see it. Awesome. <laughs> oh, right. You're going to have to pre-order it. Play with it yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the light still comes out, even though the, the, the head telescopes. So the engineering on this was tricky. And, but I was... Yeah, I was definitely, you know, making sure that this thing was going to happen just, again, for for that reason. And then the other thing I wanted to, you know, brought up these shortcomings earlier just to compare. I know there's been some questions online about his scale. This oh, is wow. the old R2 versus the new R2, and you can see their significant height difference. And so, yeah, we, you know, we got – we were very careful as far as the – the his proportions and stuff like that and um so i'm i'm pretty stoked for him i was excited for and then just opening up possibilities for you know other astromech droids in the future but um yeah so let's let's go to the digital it looks like his colors have changed too i mean it's there to me like it's definitely an improvement yeah. as well yeah so kind of like what uh, Tom just demoed, like, you know, this third leg leg for R2 can send out so we can get him into his awesome rolling pose that he has here. And then he's just he's just got a lot of functionality for being, like, you know, a, a droid. And the fact that, like Tom was saying, like, you've got all, like, these different tools that you can put into the this, like, little compartment, and then they all have like, the exact same diameter, so they can kind of be swappable for any single one of those slots. And, like, this is my only personal preference, but, like, just having like all like those little tiny pieces of video to sort in some place is a big deal because the last thing that you want to do is like ever lose a small piece of and you can't you know assemble your R2 anymore in, in the way that you want to. Um, so this is like a really, really great functionality for the new R2. A apart from just being like rescaled to be the proper scale, we've got a lot more packed into him like this time around too. And then this is like him just everything well, is <laughs> out. That's great. That's great. It's nice to have that place to put your stuff, you know? Stuff. Yeah. That's a tough one because he's so well known and recognizable. Mm -hmm. So anything's right. off, it's going to be yep. noticed. Yes. Yep. Yeah, there's some passionate R2D2 fans out there, I've discovered. Yeah. There's <laughs> a group that actually makes exact full size R2 
and has all the specs, the exactly. sounds, and everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They also do Wally too. There's another group that does oh, cool. Wally as well. You can get the specs and make it yourself. I mean, yeah. it is a tough challenge. That's like oh, that's like reinventing the stop sign. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm super excited that it's going to get out there, and hopefully, people will enjoy it. But I, you know, I'm pretty happy with him. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Nicely He's, done. Yeah, that's a awesome. lot of fun to play with. Yeah. Yeah. Three strokes of the saber for you guys today so far. <laughs> three out of three. I got away with that. Away with yeah, that's a three out of three, by the so way. Three out of three. That three, three strokes of the three. saber. Ooh. Oh. Oh, here we go. Oh. 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 I've been holding this box for a week. <laughs> <laughs> off set, off camera. Here. So we have the N1 Starfighter, um, Mando's new ride. Razor Crest, what? No, it's all about <laughs> this now. It's easier to park too than the Razor Crest. So. But yeah, this was actually an awesome collaborative effort between our, the sculpting department here, our Hong Kong partners, and um, the design department here as well. So the Hong Kong office actually focused on the ship. I mean, we even got the weathered paint detail, but also we're still trying to get that shininess. Um, of the ship itself, we actually achieved that through the plastic that was actually produced in. That's a little Grogu back here that my team and I actually helped bring to life, and we just kind of reused our uh, reprints on existing uh, Mando. There's a lot of little hidden features that I don't want to give away right now, but folks that have ordered this and I see that it's like super popular with folks, you'll find out that um, it's got some really cool oh, clips in it. Yeah, here he comes with that shot. Right oh. Sound effects mandatory. <laughs> and then you got the little Grogu back there. So the, that's and that slides obviously right. Oh the yeah. Cockpit. So, so he sits in there. Him. Well, he's you don't have to. Yeah. So. You know what? And the weird thing about it is, I love this kind of stuff. Like the base itself. This is actually kind of one of my favorite features about this. I mean, to me, it actually makes it look. I mean, it's premium anyway. But now with the actual logo on there and just the way the nice smooth flow of the actual base itself this the prop stand on it to me this makes it not just it takes it from a toy to um a collectible now i mean this is something you can display on your desk or on a shelf or something um i just love this guy i mean okay. carter you yeah. know and the, for those of us who are the moc uh in inklage uh this packaging is again I, i'll say it say it again I'll say it, <laughs> I'll say it enough. the packaging give me that box that packaging, you that packaging? yeah it's really great <laughs> The, the, this goes back to you don't need to give Louie what's inside the box. Just give him the box. I'm an MOC guy. I mean, he's I fine. Really mean it. No, he's fine. Yeah. It's not Louis wants the cardboard. I'm, I'm all about the MOC. All of my stuff's MOC. Mm -hmm. uh, let's be honest. Carter's taking this off the stand multiple times in his this office guy. and going. Mint on card. Well, yeah. How else is it? Yeah, fly? exactly. Yeah. Get a, a close-up of that package, too. Look at that. I mean, this is a piece of art. That box is work of art. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, it is gorgeous. And I is love nice. um, just awesome. having our entire team when everything's clicking. All of this stuff, um, from paint design to actual to packaging, again, soft goods, mm -hmm. sculpture, uh, engineer, everything. All of it comes together. And to me, I never been doing this for years. I never get tired of seeing this. I'm still it excites you still. It did. Yeah. It does. I'm, I'm still a kid looking at all of this stuff. Just seeing the raw when even when we're going back to just the 3D prints coming off of the machine, it's, I'm still in awe about how all of this works. To me, it's still witchcraft and magic and like science. <laughs> you're, you're not, and I you're, don't know. That's an understatement. I've known you for yeah. a lot of years, like over a decade at this point. I always can say, I don't know if it's coming through on the camera, your, your energy of butter is always so positive oh, and, and youthful. You. Uh, <laughs> and it's a, it's a joy to be around you for it because it's really, you haven't changed. Your energy has not shifted in over a decade that I've known you. Oh, well, thank on the you. subject, man, I really, it's really something. It's really a joy to be here with you. It's all the field testing. There's, Absolutely. and then there's the model. Yes, there it is. Mm -hmm. So this um, file itself, this was the actual file from our Hong Kong offices and everything. So we're actually worked together hand in hand with this to make sure that our figures fit in the vehicles. Um, Grogu actually fits in his little compartment. There might be some features for future figures to, to fit in that compartment. Who knows? Um, but all of it just comes together. There's some other little secret um, parts about this guy that's, again, I don't want to give away. It's just, to me, this is probably one of my favorite things we've done um, recently. And I just, 
You've been very excited about it. I'm super excited about it. It's lie. sleek. It's, I just, well, even when I saw it in the show, like, oh my God, is that going to be his new ship? That's awesome. The, color, the <laughs> color quality of the plastic, though, like, uh, yes. guys, I mean, Ian, Paul, uh, you chime in any time here. This is not an understatement. It's really popping off, man. Even under this lighting, it's really. Yeah, we really wanted really to great. dial it in and make it look like, yeah, we took this right off the show and made it into this awesome collectible for everybody. Yeah. Wow, this is awesome. Thank you. Yeah, this yeah. is so great. Fun stuff. Cool, right? What's next? I feel like I'm just like, what's next? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what oh, what's next? Right. Oh, oh, here we go. go. Yeah. All right. Magnus go ahead. So, yeah, this guy, you know, he's uh, one of Grievous's boys. Uh, and uh, he's he was, again, different form factor, right? even though he's still a bipedal kind of humanoid-ish. But he's got all of this funky armor layering and then figuring out how to do the um, articulation, building that in so that he it's, again, the nice thing about robots is there, the articulation is kind of designed in there for you, which is nice. So you work around that. But the unfortunate thing sometimes with, um, you know, dealing with uh, CG models is, you know, they don't always adhere to the laws of physics. So a lot of times, you know, the, the joints won't, you know, if, if you were to actually collide them, you know, they would stop at like 30 degrees or whatever. So you got to kind of fudge some things occasionally just to get it to be a more functional figure. He comes with his soft goods robe as well, cape, whatever you want to call it. Cool. Mm, oh, wow. wow. That's so, yeah. Nice. And then he comes. I love your reactions. You work for the company. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> this is good. Did you, did you really chose for digital? He wow, comes this is awesome. it's, I love cool stuff. This is great. So this was done in ZBrush. Did yes. We, yes. Of course. Yeah, it's in ZBrush right now. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Tom, did 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 you start with scan data, or did you do this? Did you guys do this completely this, from scratch? This one had a low res file from. Back from in Maya, I thought, right? Yeah, yeah, from Maya. I think it was back in when was this done? Two thousand three or ish? Two thousand four. Uh, yeah, so it, it was. It wasn't great, but it gave us enough to start to with. Off. Start yeah. with. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. It's yeah, a great shot, sure. Bailey. Uh, showing the details, the yeah. weathering. Yeah, yeah and it's yeah. kind of echo kind of like the previous points, like. On like vintage, on black series, like textures do make a world of difference, even though they're so small in the actual physical product. Even if it's like to break up the specularity on a surface, it just helps that readability so much more. So, I mean, like a lot of like this can get like watered down in production, but all of it still like matters. And it's just so impressive to, to actually see it like zoomed in like, like this, just to know like how much like work goes into even a, you know, a single part of a toy, you know, just. It's always like rewarding to see like other work that people are doing with this stuff too. So I mean, it's it's like it's a great place to be at. We're at Hasbro, so I think that's why nobody ages seemingly. So we'll <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> get a close up of Louis packaging. Oh, I got a package box. here on the box. Look at this thing. There it is. There you go, Louis. Kidding me? You're. I don't care what generation you're from. You're nine, ten years old. You get this. Look at this thing. We're really derailing the toys. I'm not really. <laughs> it's actually, this is actually in alignment with it. Look at this. You're going to want this. Look at this package. You're going to want these. I love that you put the old Kenner on there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Get, get Collect get them that original yeah, Kenner. Yeah. By the way, for Make those that don't know, Kenner was the original Star Wars yeah. toys. Yes. Place sets abound here. Here we go. The next place. Oh. The next place. Oh. Yeah. Oh. yeah. yeah. Environment the zebra. Oh, can I, can yes. I have him? Thank you. Thank you. I'll hold him for you. All right. So here we go. Look at the balance. Something else I always wanted as a kid. Um, the indoor bunker play sets. But I the closest I could find uh, was me actually cutting cardboard and spray painting it gray. Well, my dad spray painted it for me. So and then I just put that together with duct tape. But I've come a long way since then. So oh yeah, show that. Go ahead. Are we ready? Yeah, go. So he's got the shot. Go ahead. Oh well. Oh, snap. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Does not do that when he's not here. Sound effects not included. Right. <laughs> but wait, there's more. We're going to get really oh. in here. We're going. There's more? We're going next level. Oh, wait, right, okay. Let me get a shot in right there. See if I can get to this. There's. Wait, hold on. Wait for it. There. That panel. 
Look at this guy. He's got it all. This opens up. It's dark. There you go. Oh. There you How go. else is Han Solo going to um, try and hotwire it? Yeah. And there's also, he can't get it done. So then there's another one. Then R2 is going to come in. Unplug it in there. And the smaller one. Which we have the R2. You have the R2. Mm -hmm. Well, the not whole that R2. This R2 is going to see yeah, if he can get in there. This one. <laughs> so there you go. And then it comes with... It comes with him as well, correct? Yes. But oh, wait. Wait. Okay. Hold on. Uh -oh. There's more. There's no. More. Wait. Whose head is that? Go ahead. Oh, I can <laughs> feel it. Who's it? Oh, he's pulling it off. Oh. Oh, oh you're sweet. pulling it off. Daniel Craig. Oh, hold on. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I got that snug. Harrison Ford. Sweet. Would you like the some? Ha ha! <laughs> oh, you got it. The name's Trooper. Gotta be Scout Trooper. <laughs> wow. For the first time ever. So he was actually, yeah, is it? Yeah, yeah it is I don't know. Yeah. They did this guy. So, yeah. what the designer told me that this um, gentleman was actually um, the person that they were actually filming on his property for the indoor scene. So they put him in the movie as one of the um, oh, oh. scouts. Oh, guy. Wow. Wow. May I see yeah. that? Let me. That's the first time that guy's ever appeared. Look at yeah. That. So he was never done in the classic line. I don't think we've done him in, and in, in. I mean, he never really had a name. He was just we just call him. Um, Biker Scout uh, in disguise. So, yeah, I suppose that indoor trooper that was covert operation. And this one's available now? As oh, well? yes. This is also available in Hasbro Just Pulse. Man who owns HasbroPulse.com. We're, we're going to lose Carter now for the rest of the stream. That's it. Just playing with this. <laughs> There's even moss detail. I'm just saying, folks. Moss <laughs> detail. Look at that. Cool. Look at that. I love doing the play sets as well, or at least like. I'm working with my team on bringing these together because there's a lot more. Even though you have the figure that's being articulated, just the engineering of all of these guys to not only actually make the doors open and things like that, but we also have to figure out, all right, how is this going to disassemble and fit into specific parameters for our packaging? Because packaging plays a very bit important role. Number one, it makes people happy. And number two, <laughs> The package is determined, and once the package size is determined, then the crates and assortments, how many boxes go in a particular box, then that's determined. How many boxes go onto a pallet? How many? So it's a domino effect. So ultimately, we figure out what the packaging is first, and then work within those constraints and figure out, all right, how much can we get into this packaging and still have an uh, awesome experience for the consumer and still be able to figure out and fit all of these different boxes giant packages and stuff into a larger box, larger boxes on larger pallets, into trucks, into shipping containers. Distribution. So, yeah, so there's shipping. Yeah, there's a lot, even shelf space um, at- In stores. In stores Target, and stuff like instance, that. Yep, exactly. So all of that, the packaging actually does play a super huge, crucial role. And it determines um, one of the funny stories, uh, when I was early at Hasbro, we had designed a toy. And it had gotten, it was still in early on process and everything. And it, we found out it just slightly didn't the packaging. And I was still new. I was a new kid. And so why don't we just adjust the packaging? And everyone just looked at me. We canceled <laughs> the toy. We actually canceled it because it was going to be such a domino effect. It never saw the light. Wow. You're, getting, you're getting into something that's very you know, particular interest to me is the business, the background, yeah. and, and the sort of operations level stuff that makes this possible. You know, we're having fun throwing this stuff around. But what he's saying is there's no understatement there. It is like to a millimeter, there's space tolerances for the toy shelf because there's shared space at the toy level, uh, inside the toy aisles, inside of those distributors, and it's big business. So it's, I'm happy to hear you speak about those aspects of it because if you're sitting there and you're wondering, hey, I want to get involved in this, um, there's many ways you can get involved. You could start in the business management side of things or the marketing and, and yes. you know logistics side of things and then maybe find a, a path in the artistic way. Yeah, uh, I got us. So this is a new clone trooper. Um, so we're... Pretty stoked for this guy. We did a stormtrooper that I experimented with a few years back where a lot of different layering, like with the chest armor. So essentially almost like how they would wear the costume. So the chest armor is a separate piece. The shoulder pads are um, trapped in between the, the butterfly and the, the, sh the shoulder joint. This guy also has bicep swivels. So you could get, um, you know, again, get the aiming your blaster in front of you. So I put the, yeah, like oh, that. So, oh, wow. So That's he's uh, yeah, coming at you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, this was, this was built off of 
the old, you know, this is like version three of, of our clone trooper built off of the version 2.0. So he's got the floating knee pads, bicep swivels, separate chest armor. Uh, the butterflies are more functional on this guy. He's a bit bulkier. Shoulder pads are a little bulkier, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of show him off a little bit. He's He was a fun one. And, yeah, people love their clones. So. Is he available? Is is he up for pre-order? I think he's – I think everything we're looking at yeah. today is up for pre-order. Oh, I bet. So, yeah, you can see the bicep swivel on this, which we didn't have before oh, either. Yeah. Wow. We're going to find out right now for Carter if he's available. Let's do it. I'm on it. I'm I'm searching Pulse right now. Ooh. He actually might be sold See, now out. I'm getting oh, distracted. He's gone down the rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's sitting here shopping for trouble. What's going on Probably here? Probably shouldn't have done this. <laughs> what if he says, oh. If my wife is watching, sorry. <laughs> Your reaction was priceless. Oh. Tom, Tom, does he have a, um, is, is there a head underneath there? Or is oh, there yeah, there is. You want to pop that helmet off? You got to. He looks like all his other brothers. He's in pre-order right now. There you go. What's the number? Wow. Like, yeah. Yeah. What's the limit? Oh, all right. so, it's like he's still available. All right, sweet. All right. Would you all like right. me to put one I'll in be, for you? A couple more to go. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? No, that Matthew Carter, he wants me to order one for him right now <laughs> on my iPad. Can we, we, have, we, have, a few, we have a few more? Oh, that's so sure, cool, yeah. man. Yeah, that is cool. That's the stuff right there. That looks like If I was going to get a haircut. Boom. That's yeah. what you would do? That's, that's that guy. <laughs> you got options, man. Pedro. <laughs> that is the clone trooper, my friend. Look at that guy. Looks good. All right. All right. Let's go on. <laughs> Let's continue. <laughs> Rebel scum. Okay. So All right. This okay. one. Yeah. There's a couple of things that I love about this guy. So, do you want me to hold the other one while you hold the one? Oh, yeah, let's do that. Which one would you like to hold? You, you, you hold you, whatever. Okay. Sure, thank you. I knew that was going to happen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sweet. So, this guy is actually an amalgamation. We brought in old school and new school technology. So, ultimately, the body on this figure to, down to his knees is a wax sculpture. So, we actually scanned the wax sculpture and then we actually just added new articulated lower legs so they could actually fit on the shorter struts because this speeder bike is actually the true speeder bike scale it should be. The original 80s speeder bike that Kenner created, I think it was actually out to here. So we needed to make it a little bit more, a little bit smaller, a little bit more compact. Um, and we also wanted to make sure that his legs actually were articulated enough to where his feet would actually fit in the struts. This is the more classic version. And this is the newer version that appeared in The Mandalorian, complete with little kidnapped Grogu in his shoulder sling bag. Wait, you in time for some focus? Let's get that kidnapped Grogu. There you Nothing go. like a good kidnapping. There it is. In the middle there it is. There it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. And then there's also another small detail. Again, okay. we have awesome design team. Didn't realize, if you look on the back, they actually have different. I want to say saddle bags, so but different bags as well. So just again, another small detail for uh, the fans because um, they'll definitely notice it. Another thing, small detail. We're going to remove which him one? From, all right, we're removing we're, him. We're, we're going to look at his knee pads. Oh, so it's something. Again, okay. It's a little small detail, but the costume department, we weren't sure exactly what was going on with the actual show itself, but their knee pads are actually inverted. So his are facing up that way, and these are, are considered kind of upside down. So we wanted to make sure that it was true to the show and the actual um, appearance in the episode. So we actually made these, they were going to be separate pieces anyway because of the color break. Uh, wow. So we decided, hey, Let's make invert these and keep it completely accurate to the show. So I wonder classic. if that was an accident on the show. I wonder. So, yeah, yeah. I wonder on if the wrong way, right? I'm not sure we'll ever know, but no. I think it's a cool little detail that was pointed out to me. Again, my attention to detail didn't see it at all. So, but design pointed out. And again, this is always a team effort. So there you go. That's awesome. Yeah. Nice. So we got a little little Grogu kidnapped on this little speeder bike. Wow! Look at this, Kyle. Come in with us. Look at this movement. Yeah that you've got in the articulation, right? So obviously you have head, but look, you can actually shift oh, yes. the head forward and back. Uh, it's hard because my big fingers. So yeah, we like actually. This. See, look, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> like, a stop, like a stop mo animator's dream right here. It's like once again, we're not having fun. <laughs> I paid to do this all day. This is that's impressive. I like that's really yeah. cool. Yeah. So it's just a little and what's also cool about this guy, um, back with the black series figure, uh, when we had the speeder bike, we actually also implemented this particular base that it um, the support stand. But it's actually here give me just a second you can actually rotate it to where it sits at three different levels so one where it's right above ground one where it's like hover, oh nice hiking, and nice touch one where it's actually high up so wow. i believe that was a uh, mr Venemeyer's. it was you're right, right. Yeah. it was so yeah he's, wow. he's an engineering genius so he's he knows he knows himself some toys it so. is now available wait yes it's available you can add to cart right now okay. pre-order no, no, it's oh, available it's right now to add to cart. Oh, I'm just making the list of what Carter's buying. <laughs> <laughs> and there you see the uh, the thank you Bailey, uh, the figure with all of the the poly groups areas and stuff. So um, it's super easy for us to not only look at it like this, but when we're also um, working with our team, um, our Hong Kong partners and everything, we can actually quickly show an exploded view of how the pieces are all broken out and everything. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to, oh. only one of them is available now. Only the one that I had is available. The one, the brown, the one with the Grogu in the bag is not available yet. It's pre-order. Pre-order. Pre -order. Pre -order. Carter's is pre-order. Mine's available now that I was holding. Right. Yes. Yep. Just setting it. There you go. Yeah, Again, yeah. We're on, I'm on HasbroPulse.com. <laughs> awesome. All right. No what clock is ticking. We should move on. Right. Yep. Okay. What do we got next? Next is Black Series Ahsoka, Season oh, 3 right. oh, yes. of Clone Wars. <laughs> Ahsoka. Yes. So this is another fan favorite. We uh, wanted to get this out there. She's, um, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, the there's a couple of things, and, and we'll touch on it with this uh, figure that Bailey's going to talk about. Uh, we implemented some uh, some new thigh articulation as well, and then uh, she also has the butterflies. Yeah, she's she's a fun character. So I was glad to get her out there and. She also has boot swivel, stuff like that. So in here, like two like lights that were held just like mount on like the front for like belts, like they do in the show. So you can kind of see like that here, where they just kind of peg into like those areas. Um, yeah, she's a really cool figure, and you know, one that fans have like wanted for like a while like now because it's one for like really definitive like looks. So we're happy to get her in like in the line, and she came out great. I mean, the entire team from. Sculpting to, to deco to manufacturing really, really did an awesome job with her, so. And Tom, how did you change up? You said the thigh swivel is different. Like, what did you guys end up doing? I'm curious on that one. Yeah, it's, so one of the things that, you know, we're always looking to innovate or find, like, one of the things that I didn't like in the thigh swivel was, you know, the anatomy and your thigh isn't a, a perfect circle, right? It's it's an oval. And so whenever it, you either have to compromise the anatomy or the, you know, or you get a big step when you swivel it. And so what we did, in, what we're doing now instead is there, it allows for just a little bit of range of motion. And, and that, you know, I was just looking at our own anatomy and just like, you know, how much does your, your thigh actually rotate outward? It's not a lot, you know, it's, it, it, you can, once you start rotating it, you, you kind of have to lift your leg up. So what I found is, so I've been implementing this. We did this on the Indiana Jones line as well. That's actually where I started doing it because we, we do that line as well. And then, um, and it, it was working, you know, relatively effective. And so where we started implementing it into more. So it was, it, it gives the thigh a more natural anatomical look and still a functional um Articulating point. Oh, okay. so, yeah. No. You know, there's a little bit of trial and error in that. Some of them, you know, came up like the Indian, the yeah, Indiana Jones line. There's one of them that I think, uh, you know, there was a mix up as far as what the intent was. So it didn't come out as good as I had hoped. But well, keep working out the bugs. On it came these. out great, Tom Rigo. Yeah, it looks awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we work with a great team too. You know, a lot of our. Uh, sculptors, outside vendors, and stuff—they do phenomenal work, and we, you know, they're also fans, and they're 
passionately, you know, um, into this stuff. And, and it's, uh, you know, it's great just having, you were mentioning earlier about Carter's passion and stuff. Yeah. That's, that's all over. You know, everyone's really passionate about what they do and, and the, um, hopefully reflects in the work that that's being output. So, yeah. All right. I know we got to move on. So let's go to the next one. All right. This is the last vintage item and Ooh. drum roll, please. It's the Grand Inquisitor. Ooh. Yes. Yep. Yes. So this is the Grand Inquisitor for our vintage line. I don't have a physical sample to show. All right, show. you got to go now. Okay, I'll show myself. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> <No. laughs> you guys are Actually, right. I don't have it. Wait, does Tom have one? I was looking. I don't see it. I can look. Uh, uh, go ahead, Carter. It's okay. So this is the uh, Grand Inquisitor. Yeah. We actually have a couple of sabers with this guy. So he has one where his saber hilt where it actually plugs onto his back. And then we have a separate saber hilt where it's actually the saber's ignited attached to the hilt. So he comes technically with two sabers. The cape right now is just a kind of a, oh, there he is. Thank oh, you, Tom. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's him. Wow, wow. look at yeah. that. Oh, I love the electric. It. I love the two-tone cape. Look at that yeah. pose too. Look at that. Cool. Yeah. Did you pose that too, Tom Rigo? No, I did not. Nice. It was a uh, pre-pose for me. Oh, but, nice. No, it took, came up. Yeah, this is the first time I've actually seen him uh, all decoed out and in final production. But yeah, yeah nice. this guy was uh, another one. I know he's a fan favorite even back from when he was in his animated version. So he finally made his live action debut in Obi Wan. So. We definitely wanted to make sure that we captured this character and uh, brought him into the vintage line for us and for all the fans and everything. So, um, yeah, it's I love this figure because he's got all of these little subtle details, like the, his little insignia on his armor, even the deco on his head. Um, it's just to me, this figure is there's so much where it's like less is more. So. Just his really, his color palette, just uh, all the little minute details and stuff. It, to me, it just really makes, he is literally Star Wars to me. Like just that, that aesthetic, um, the color palette, everything. Uh, and you know, there's no question of whether or not this guy is good or bad. Yeah, he's, he's a bad guy, but. Yeah, you yeah. see some of the vintage, mm -hmm. in essence, the original in him. Yeah. In the design to what we have now today too in the newer Star Wars. Yeah. So. Yeah. Bailey, can you zoom in on the face again? I, I really sure. don't want this to get lost in the mix. The portrait work that's done on these things is like, yeah, it's out of this world. It's really yeah. fantastic at that scale. I mean, look oh, at the thanks. quality of. I mean, that does not get lost on me. That's for sure. And I'm sure people are, around the world are watching and tuning in and saying the same thing. Like, how do they do that? It's like, that's the power of zebra. Yeah, I mean, even the little scribe um, lines on his head, like it's a subtle detail, but we know this was indicative of the character. We had to make sure that those were there. That's so really it cool. still comes through in production and everything. And what's great about it is, yes, it's, we can do this in ZBrush. All of the little minutia and all the little details in its face will even get to the point to where we'll ask ourselves, does, should this character have fuller bags under their eyes? Should they have less, um, more creases? Is this an older character? And just because of ZBrush, we can achieve that even, even at this scale. So it's great. Let's wow. let's just end with Bailey's. Uh, this is yeah. next one is Bailey's sculpt. He he put a lot of effort into this one. Oh yeah, it, yeah. It, it is the Black Series, Darth Malgus. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right on, man. That looks so good. Nicely done, Bailey. Bailey. I just want to Thank say you. again earlier, if you're, if you're just tuning in, Bailey, twelve year old kid, reaches out to Paul Gabriel, yeah. and now here today on a live feed with uh, the Zebras team. Showcasing his work for the Hasbro <laughs> Black Series. I mean, if there's any career advice, do a Bailey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, oh, that is so good. That. Oh, he looks mean. I like it. He's a big dude. He's a yes. big boy. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah, that's is so that available cool. now? What do we got? Oh, you want to see if it's available? Yes, I'm sorry. I'm slacking on my availability. Check the pulse, man. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, so this guy poured a lot of my heart and soul into like this one. Um and the entire like team did too. I mean they, they just did an incredible job with like the soft goods on like the cape and like the deco department did an awesome job with like the paint apps. Just the entire team really came together on like this figure to make it a kind of like 
this ultimate tribute to like the video game fans, which is kind of like the, the realm where I, I'm in. A lot of my friends are you know, Star, Star Wars, the Old Republic like fans, and, like that kind of era of Star Wars. And just to be able to you know, create a figure for like that era in particular was really, really special. Um, so like Tom was saying, um, we just have a removable face mask for Darth Malagus. So if you take off that face mask, you got all this really, really cool detail with his like you know burn marks and everything else in the figure too. He's got like that kind of like arrogant smile there as well. Um, just a really fun, cool Sith character. He's like one of the coolest Sith Lord designs like out there. So again, to just be able to create like the toy version of like that was a real honor and privilege. So I'm glad that you know we we're able to afford like the removable mask because that's kind of his definitive like look in the game. Um, and just paying really close attention to like how all like this stuff is constructed like how it just you know keys in, in the back there w on onto like the head so it's like a seamless um you know integration in like that way just making use of the mechanical structures of like the head as well the pose the thing, inside, if, you, um, if you have a chance to go to the pulse website if you're watching go to the pulse website they've got this guy posed up in a way that i've never seen a figure pose before yeah he's like, putting like, his cape on he's putting his like, cape I mean, over his hood or whatever over his head and it's just phenomenal oh, yeah, it's image right. number four yeah. or whatever yeah again like the the team did an amazing amazing job like the photography like the posing like yeah like they're even pulling off poses i didn't even like think about like that, like <laughs> it's just really really cool to, to see like that especially like the the single kick pose like i was just yeah that was awesome so. no and that's kind of what i was talking about earlier as far as like what's fun about this stuff is engineering it in such a way so that the end user then comes up with these you know the you know their imagination's the limit and and some of the stuff i got wow i didn't even think about that i think there was one of luke running and i was like how the heck did they get him to stand on his toe like that it was <laughs> i don't know how they maintained that balance but they did it so it was uh yeah it's it's fun to see there's like you know instagram accounts where uh people do toy photography that yep. it's just phenomenal and you know some of that stuff is you do a double take it looks like a you know a still from the film and yeah. uh yeah. until you i'm a big fan of him look at the yeah. scale on this thing yeah yeah, yeah. Like, that's another thing like a lot of people have questions so that's why i wanted to bring up like the, the clone trooper that's you know pretty you know well known in terms of like the clones like height he's a he's a big guy like he, there's a reason he's a deluxe figure he's he's big yeah um you know he's he's really right. impressive he was even so big to where i remember talking about this with tom but we actually had to tool up an entirely different like lightsaber blade just because it's the the one that we had just looks so puny on him and also in, in his build. So this lightsaber blade is a lot longer than like our previous ones as well. So he's just overall he's he's a big boy. So <laughs> how many total inches is this one inside the black line? Oh goodness. Like eight? Uh, no. I don't know by, by like millimeters, so I can I can think he's like around like what, Tom? Like one hundred and sixty nine millimeters? Yeah, it's around seven inches. A little yeah. over seven, I think. Yeah, so I mean, he's he's big, um, and then if I can just touch on like this really quick, he does have the exact same shoulder pad technology that you just saw with like the, the new clone trooper, where he's able to you know get his arm up like all that way, despite being a very bulky figure, and even like the posability in like his like butterfly joint, like he can just he can hold his like lightsaber hilt with like both hands. There's just a lot of really cool range of motion with this guy as well. Nice, well Bailey. done. Yeah. Well done, Bailey. So that's a big boy. I didn't get a round of applause yeah. again for that one. That's phenomenal work. Thank you. Bailey. Whew. I don't know what to say. It took my breath away here today. I tell you, awesome you guys stuff. Integrated... That's, that's what we got, guys. I mean, yeah. we, we, there'll be more coming, but you know, we're, we're cranking this stuff out all year long and, and you know, hope you guys are enjoying it. But um, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate you. you having us. Yeah, thank absolutely. You. Thank, thank you, you yeah. Bailey, Tom, Carter, oh, everyone man. online. A round yes. of applause. It's been a great adventure going through our, our toys slash collectibles, as we're starting to call them as older adults now. I hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you so much. Always interesting to see behind the scenes of the action figure, how they create them, how they develop them, and it'll end up being... Thanks for watching. My name is Usual Mike. If you enjoy this kind of thing and you want to support the channel, go to the description. You'll find links to memberships, merch, and affiliate links. And don't forget to hit subscribe, tap that little bell for notifications, slap a like on the video if you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time. All the best.